How you doing? How's New York for treating you? I love New York. I love this city so much. I had forgotten that you lived in New York for a little bit. Yeah, I lived here when I was 19 and 20. I lived in the village. What brought you here when you were 19? Well, I wanted to study English because I studied French before, so I wanted to keep working as an actress in my country, but also in other territories, and I knew I had to learn English, and I came here to study and to keep studying ballet because I did ballet for 17 years. Mm -hmm. So I was here just being a student. I was already working a lot as an actress in Europe, but I took some time where I was just, I needed to feel like a student again, you know? It was really good for me. You know, you talked about ballet, and it's interesting to me. I, you know, we're gonna be talking a lot about moms today. I think, you know, the, the film is called Mama. Um, but I wonder what your parents thought of you when you were four years old. I have read in an interview you said you were four years old and knew then that you loved to perform. Yeah, and I have too much energy. I think it's never <laughs> too much energy for a kid, but it would be nowadays considered like a problem, you know, the energy that I have. <laughs> <laughs> My parents were very wise and they said, this girl, she needs to do some sport. She needs to go there and jump and run and sweat. And I feel like that saved my life, you know, because I was doing that like, from the time I was four. I was being able to express myself. I was being able to really like sweat and find a way to channel my energy. And also through that, I discovered my passion for, for acting because I was dancing, but I was playing other characters. I was four asking the teacher, I want to play Carmen. <laughs> she was like, maybe you are a little too young for that. You're going to have to wait a few years. Growing up, I didn't have references of people in my family or friends or neighbors. Nobody that I knew worked as an actor or as a musician or as a dancer or as any job related to art. So I was really dreaming about science fiction. And my mm -hmm. parents were kind enough not to laugh ab about me for that because mm -hmm. it was like uh, I have this girl that now is saying that she wants to do this with her life. So they asked me to just keep studying, but keep my dreams and try, knowing that it was going to be really hard. I found an agent when I was 14. Well, she did say no to me three times. She sent me away. <laughs> she said, you are too young, and I'm not getting more people this year. I'm still with her today. Her name is Katrina Bayonas. But she sent me away. I would come back and say, no, I need you to represent me, and you'll see I will get the jobs. And let me do the castings. And No came back, no. She would ask me to do scenes from Casablanca. I said, but why you ask me to do that if I'm 14? Let me, <laughs> let me improvise, let me do something appropriate for my age. And the day that I did an improvisation about a woman that was very angry with somebody else, and it was me with her. And that day she told me, I want to sign you, I want to work with you. And then she sent me to a casting with Jaime Chavarri. I got the job, then the job with Bigas Luna, and that's one movie after another. And we're still together. My father, because we didn't have a, a theater near where we lived, because we lived in the outskirts of Madrid. So my father bought a Beta, Beta Max machine. Remember how big they were, like this, <laughs> and heavy? And the tapes were like this. And, and he gave me the, the member card. And for me, that was like the biggest treasure. I could go there and rent the movies that I wanted to watch. And I discovered Billy Wilder, Meryl Streep, Pedro Almodovar, and I would watch them over and over and over. But then the, the day that I saw Tie Me Up, Tie Me Down, um, and that was in a theater, one of the first times that I went to a big theater, I remember like um, the, it was a life-changing experience. I came out of the theater, I took a walk by myself, and I decided in that moment to, to try, to try to become an actress just to give it a try. And I said, I have to meet this man. This man is going to be important in my life. Even if I don't work with him, I have to tell him. I have to hug him. I have to thank him for everything that he gives us. It was amazing. I would go to his house. I found out where he lived. <laughs> and, I <laughs> and I would look um, at his window from the street, like this. Like, uh, and then if. If I would think about him in a movie theater or in a bar, if I would think about him, he would walk in. <laughs> <laughs> this happened like three or four times. By now, he believes me that those things happen. Like by then, he's a, he's this crazy girl. But he was always <laughs> so sweet to me. And, and then when he saw um, my first two movies, he called me. Because he didn't thought it was the same girl that was like, 
kind of stuck in him. No? <laughs> <laughs> and when he called me, I, I, the person that was with me and told me, Almodovar is on the phone. I was drying my hair and I said, yeah, very funny. And I kept drying my hair because that was exactly the dream. The dream for so many years, the thing that I wanted to experience was happening. And I didn't say, no, he is on the phone and he wants to talk to you. And, and for me, this moment was, imagine what it meant for me. I was very young. So. In the past, like, you know, with Volver, about your mother being an inspiration for certain mothers you've played, was, was she an inspiration at all for Magda? I think always when I play a strong character, a, a strong woman that I feel is like a superhero, like capable of anything mm -hmm. and everything, she always comes to, to mind. Are you still, I, your mother was a hairdresser and I've heard that you also do a little bit of haircutting on the side, you have a second job occasionally. I, I learn a lot in the hair yeah. salon and mm -hmm. then I force people to let me do their hair. <laughs> and a lot of friends, Salma Hayek, she mm -hmm. lost the power, the, the light in her house and she had to go to a premiere and guess who she trusts. To <laughs> you learn a lot, you know, there are so many years I saw my mother and the people that work with her doing that and I was learning about her, all the treatments that they did, but I was, it was my first acting school. Because I saw all these women, they were all playing characters. And I don't judge them for that, I mean, we all do that, but they enter one way and, and, and live completely different person. <laughs> <laughs> you once said that you like to be terrified when you show up on set. Yeah, but I am always terrified. <laughs> like, it, it always feels like day one, uh, I have the same feeling of my first day in Hamon Hamon. Completely new, you feel like a kid again, that's why this is so addictive, this feeling, because it is a new character and a new team of people you're working with. Uh, or even when it's with Pedro, there is so many movies together. If it's a new one, I feel like fresh, new, new start, you know nothing. Maybe you spend months preparing this character. I really would like working that way, like having the time to prepare and to try to understand who they are. But even with that, you have to throw all that information away when you get to the set and just be open to whatever is gonna happen that day, what comes from the other actors, from this director, from, it's a process that is so alive, you can have everything planned. And this vertigo, it's really, really addictive. The months preparing a character depends on, the, on what, what the movie is. You will, I will prepare one way or another, but I always see it as making a soup, you know, where you are finding all the ingredients and you let it boil for months and just is there and it's becoming part of you and you are understanding it, like not just intellectually, like it has to, you have to process it from another place. And I think this doesn't happen unless you have those months of preparing that character. And we did Vicky Christina Barcelona. I, I remember hearing that you know there's it's a Woody film, so there's no rehearsal. You just no, 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 nothing. Right. There is like Good Morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I love I love working with Woody. But it's you know very different process. I, I would go up to him with my my notebook full of my my notes from my months of preparation and my drawings from Crazy Maria Elena and. <laughs> And he would laugh at me in my face when he saw that and say, do you really think you need to, to do all of that? But you're, you're doing great. Why do you need to torture yourself with all of that? <laughs> said, well, this is the way, the way I work. Said, yeah, I work with a lot of people that do, that do this too. Like, like if I was a total weirdo, you know? <laughs>